Hey guys, today we are going to compare the Canvas Laptop and the Acer S1001. Both of these are convertible tablets, that is they have keyboard docks which connect via proprietary magnetic ports and enable them to offer laptop functionality. Also they run full-fledged windows and not the RT version, so all the legacy programs should run just fine as long as the Atom processor can handle it. With that out of the way, let's get on it. To start off, the Acer S1001 is marginally thicker both with and without the dock. The tablet when connected to the dock really feels like a very compact laptop. The screen hinges allow for varying levels of viewing and also can be used in various form factors. On the other hand, the Canvas laptop is more like a tablet with a keyboard case. The connection isn't all that powerful as a shake can cause the tablet to disconnect. Also, the screen remains in a fixed position which means there is no flexibility with viewing. Overall, I was very impressed with the Acer's implementation. It's more sturdier and allows for more flexibility in comparison to the Canvas Lab Tab. Coming to the keyboard docks themselves, the Acer dock feels really sturdy, while the laptop gives a cheaper impression in comparison and bending the keyboard dock causes it to creak, which isn't really the case with the Acer dock. Also, the keyboard dock on the laptop tends to scratch the screen, so have a screen guard on at all times. Both tablets feel really good in the hand though and while the designs are quite different, both feel great. One advantage the Acer model has is the addition of a mini HDMI port which the laptop lacks. The laptop more than makes up for this with a 3G support. More on that later. Overall, I definitely prefer the Acer's implementation and design over the laptop. Coming to the display, both tablets support 720p 10 inch displays. The colors on the Acer are quite poor in comparison to the Canvas laptop. Calibrating the display helped improve the situation though. But the disappointments with the display didn't end there. The vertical lines from the touchscreen layer are visible when moving the display while it isn't really noticeable head on. It's still disappointing all the same. The viewing angles were quite good on the laptop and the Acer was good for most part. While there wasn't much color shifting when looking at it from the top, left or the bottom, there was heavy shifting of colors when looking at it from the right, which was quite weird honestly. The keyboard on the Acer has less travel, but it's actually pretty good. For some reason, Acer decided to make the M key smaller and added an extra key, causing a bit of a mess, but for most part, it's a keyboard outlay most people will be familiar with. On the other hand, the laptop keyboard has more travel, but it feels pudgy. Also, due to the small keys, I hit nearby keys quite often, leading to a lot of typos. Also, the bigger shift and caps lock on the left side of the keyboard was not very helpful and in fact the smaller shift on the right side made it very hard to use, making it a very unintuitive experience. Personally, I preferred the typing experience on the Acer keyboard over the laptop which might take some time to get used to. I expected the Acer touchpad to perform a lot better as well, especially considering the superior feel the Acer touchpad had over the flimsy feeling laptop touchpad, but the overall performance was quite close. While the Acer tracked slightly better than the laptop, for most part, the laptop was more consistent. Also, I found that gestures on the Acer didn't work, but since the display is touchscreen, it wasn't a major issue. Both speakers had very average performance. If you decide to go for either of the tablets, ensure you have a pair of earphones with you at all times. Take a look. Coming to the performance, both tablets are powered by the same Atom processor, so performance was pretty much even. While there are occasional hiccups, the performance was overall smooth. Gaming performance was quite even as well. Though while testing Asphalt 8 on both tablets, the Canvas laptop felt warmer than the S1001. This was in spite of having a lower CPU temp of 67 degrees Celsius in comparison to the 70 degrees of the Acer. In general operations as well, the canvas always stayed cooler internally than the Acer by 3 to 4 degrees, though the Acer casing always felt cooler on the outside. Next, the storage capacity. Both tablets have 32 GB internal storage, expandable through micro SD card slot, but the Acer dock also has a 500 GB hard disk inside, which appears as a separate disk. 
While programs can be installed on it, I'd recommend storing media files on the hard disk and installing programs on the internal storage. The Canvas laptop has a bigger battery in comparison to the Acer S1001 and it reflects in our battery tests, where we played a movie for 90 minutes and gamed on it for 30 minutes. The laptop was left with 10% more battery than the Acer by the end of the test. As mentioned before, one great feature in the laptop is that it allows for 3G inbuilt. I found that the reception was decent, though the Xiaomi Mi 4i had slightly better reception in comparison. The Acer, while it doesn't have inbuilt 3G support, can use a 3G dongle through the USB or micro USB port, which is an additional cost nonetheless. Finally, on comparing the camera quality, I found the Canvas laptop fares better in general, but it's quite poor by today's standards all the same. The front camera was also quite poor on both, though again, the Canvas laptop fares better in general. Overall, the Canvas laptop is an excellent convertible for 15K. It offers a better display, inbuilt 3G support, and better battery life at a lower price. On the other hand, the Acer offers better build quality, a better keyboard, and an added 500GB hard disk. If you need the extra storage, flexibility, and the good keyboard is important to you, the Acer is worth the extra 6000 but otherwise, the laptop offers better value at a lower price. With that, we wrap the comparison. Let us know what you think in the comment section below and thanks for watching.